Good afternoon, Year 10. It's uh, time to have a look at the rest of the quantitative chemistry and recap it. And we're going to talk about moles today and how to do some of those more complicated mole calculations that I asked you to look at in one of the previous lessons. So this is our final lesson looking at this quantitative chemistry uh, and then we'll move on to something different. Okay, so let's first of all start by talking about what a mole is. Now in the lesson, I said to you there was an idea that a mole, M-O-L-E, is not the furry creature that you see coming up from the ground, uh, but is instead just a number. So we could have a pair, oh, terrible socks, of socks and Obviously, a pair of socks is two. We could have uh, a trio of uh, legs on a tripod. Uh, and obviously, a trio is one, two, three. So we can have three is a trio. Uh, you could have a quartet, which is um, four people playing uh, together their musical instrument. But in our case, we're talking about a mole, and a mole is just a number, and it's a specific number. It is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms or molecules. And this is a really important number known as Avogadro's number. Okay, Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant, because it was Avogadro who came up with this idea in the first place. So we could have a dozen eggs, you could have a dozen atoms, or we could have a mole of eggs, which would be 6.02 times, 6 times 10 to 23 eggs, or we could have a mole of atoms or molecules. Let me just move that down so you can see it, So or molecules over here. Okay, so let's consider two different situations. Let's consider we've got a mole of hydrogen atoms and we've got a mole of oxygen atoms. Now one mole of hydrogen atoms and obviously I'm not going to draw all the hydrogens that I need to because 6.02 times 10 to 23 hydrogen atoms is a lot of atoms but let's draw a few. A mole of hydrogen atoms is going to be a lot smaller than a mole of of oxygen atoms because oxygen atoms have a much bigger relative mass. So remember that the relative mass for hydrogen, AR, is 1 and the relative mass for oxygen is 16. So you would need 16 hydrogens for every one oxygen to be in the same mass. But what we care about is the fact that 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of these hydrogen, one mole of these hydrogen atoms would have less mass than one mole of these oxygen atoms. Okay, so that one mole of oxygen is heavier. So let's put a, do a bit of maths inequality symbol. Is heavier than one mole of oxygen hydrogen and that's because the relative mass of the oxygen is greater than the relative mass of the hydrogen. Okay so what did Avogadro actually do? What was his um, his work? Well he stated that we can know what one mole of these um, these atoms, these molecules, is equal to in grams. So Avogadro said that one mole, M-O-L to, to shorten it, of atoms is equal to the um, relative atomic mass or the relative molecular mass AR uh, in grams. So this means that one mole of hydrogen is in fact going to be one gram or one mole of hydrogen gas being H2 is in fact going to be two grams because there are two lots of hydrogen atoms. So here would be our H2 gas molecule. Okay, so one mole of hydrogen, single hydrogen atom is going to be one gram because that has a relative mass of one and one mole of H2, the gaseous version of hydrogen, is going to be two grams because we've got two lots 
of that relative atomic mass being one. So we've got two grams of it. Okay, so let's consider how we can calculate for those moles. So calculating moles. Hopefully you remember how to do this because we did this uh, in that last lesson. So we're going to say that number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the relative atomic mass or the relative molecular mass. So let's do an example. So it, in this case, we're going to go for calculate the number of moles in four grams of hydrogen. And let's consider that as H2 in the gaseous form. Okay, it doesn't have to be gaseous, but it could be gaseous in this case. So, coming to our answer, we're going to say moles is equal to the mass, which is our 4 grams, divided by the relative mass of hydrogen, which in this case is going to be 2 times 1. So that's 4 divided by 2, which means we're going to have 2 mole of hydrogen uh, as our calculation. So let's do another one to make sure we've understood it. Uh, so this time I want us to calculate the number of moles in um, 8 grams of oxygen. So calculate the number of moles in 8 grams of oxygen. And this time we're just going to be a single oxygen atom. So we're not going to be multiple oxygen atoms. And let's have a look. So we would go for uh, moles is equal to the mass divided by the relative atomic mass. So in this case, we're going to have 8 divided by 16, which we know our mass. 8 is less than 16, so we're going to have less than 1. 8 divided by 16 is going to be 0 0.5. So there is 0 0.5 mole of oxygen, single oxygen atom. And let's consider we were O2 for a moment. So this would be just O. So if we were O2, then we would have uh, 8 divided by 16 times 2, which is going to be 8 divided by 32, which would be 0 0.25 mole. So if we were looking at oxygen as a gas, then we'd have a quarter of a mole. Okay, right, so uh, we have to remember that because the relative atomic mass of oxygen is greater than the relative atomic mass of hydrogen, which is what we did in the previous question, then more grams of oxygen is actually going to give us less moles because remember it's all related to the mass of the atom itself. So now it's time for you to have a go at some questions. So what I would like you to do is to have a go at calculating the number of moles in 14 grams of nitrogen, 14 grams of lithium, 34 grams of um, ammonia, 15 grams of C2H6 and 80 grams of NH42SO4. So we're using those really complicated um, chemicals that we used last lesson. So pause the, um, pause the YouTube video here have a go at these and when you're ready carry on and we'll go through some answers and I will talk you through them. Okay well done ladies and gentlemen let's have a go through some answers though. So five part A we have got 14 grams of nitrogen so 14 grams of nitrogen so the number of moles is going to be equal to the mass 14 divided by the relative uh, atomic mass of nitrogen which is also 14 so we've got one mole of nitrogen okay part b this time we're going for 14 grams of lithium so the number of moles is going to be equal to the mass 14 divided by the relative atomic mass of lithium which is 7 
Now, 14 over 7 is greater than 1, so this time we're actually going to have 2 moles of lithium. Okay, part C, we're going for 34 grams of ammonia, NH3. So the number of moles is going to be equal to 34. Divide that by the uh, relative um, molecular mass, or sorry, relative atomic mass for nitrogen, which is 14, and three lots of one, because we've got three hydrogens in there. So that's 34 divided by 14 plus three, which is 34 divided by 17. So in fact, we've got two moles of um, ammonia. Part D, we are 15 grams now of C2H6. So in this case, we're going to have moles is equal to 15 divided by C2, which is 12 times 2, plus uh, 6 times 1. So that's going to give me uh, 24 plus 6, which is 30. 15 over 30, which is going to be 0 0.5 mole. Oh, running out of space. 0 0.5 mole there. Uh, and E, which is the most complex one we've got here, 80 grams of NH4, 2 SO4 is going to give us moles of 80. Divide that by, so we've got two lots of NH4. Uh, N we said was 14, so 14 plus 4 uh, times 2 plus sulfur is uh, 32 plus 4 times 16. I'm going to run out of space here. Uh, let's put brackets around that one as well. Uh, if we add all of those um, relative atomic masses up to get the molecular mass, we're going to 14 plus 4, which is 20, uh, 18, times by 2 is 32, 36, plus 32, uh, plus another 4 times 16, which gives an answer 132. So 80 divided by 132, and I would always show your step in between here to make sure if it's in an exam, you'd want the examiner to know that you know what you're doing. So 80 divided by 132 will give you an answer of 0 0.60 moles. Okay, hopefully you managed to get all five of those correct and you're able to now calculate the number of moles. Remember, moles is just a number. And in fact, in this case, we would have the same number of lithium atoms as we would have NH3 molecules because they are both two moles of that substance. Right, we're going to move on because we are now going to have a look at calculating the number of grams when we have um, a certain number of moles. So when we want to cal calculate the number of grams, then uh, from moles, excuse me, uh, then we can do so by remembering that one mole is equal to the relative atomic mass in grams of that substance. So one mole is going to be the relative atomic or relative molecular mass of substance in grams. And this is sort of what Avogadro had said. So for example, one mole of magnesium is going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of magnesium, but it's going to have a mass of 23 grams. So if I wanted half a mole of magnesium, if I've divided this side by one half, then I must divide the other side by one half. So I will have 23 divided by two, uh, which is going to be 11.5 grams of magnesium. So let's do an example. So I want to know 0.04 mole of H2SO4 in grams. So what's the mass of it in grams? So if we remember that one mole 
of H2SO4 is going to have um, a molecular mass of 2 times 1 plus 32 plus 4 times 16. So that's going to be 2 plus 32 uh, plus 16, 32, 64. So that's going to be 98 grams. So if I had one mole, I'd have 98 grams. But I need to scale this because I've only got 0 0.04 of it. So if I multiply this side by 0 0.04 to give me the number of moles I'm starting with, then I need to multiply this side by 0 0.04. So I'm going to end up with 0 0.04 moles is going to be 3.92 grams. OK, right, over to you to have a go at some questions. So here we've got calculate the number of grams in two moles of nitrogen. So just a single nitrogen atom, 0 0.3 moles of lithium, a single lithium atom, 12 moles of NH3, 1.35 moles of C2H6, and 0.04 moles of NH42SO4. So what would the mass of these substances be in grams uh, of that chemical? So remember the steps we're going to do is work out the um, atomic mass or the molecular mass and then multiply it by the number of moles you have because obviously one mole will give you that value in grams. Okay, so have a go. Pause the YouTube video here. Have a go at those questions. And once you've done them, uh, come back, restart them, and we'll go through some answers. Okay, welcome back. Let's go through some answers. Let's make sure you're able to do these questions. So we'll start with the first one. It's always a good place to start. Uh, question six, part A. We want two mole of nitrogen so two moles of nitrogen one mole of nitrogen would give me uh, 14 grams so two moles I'm going to double it is going to give me 14 times 2 which is going to be 28 grams of nitrogen okay part b 0 0.3 moles of lithium okay so 0 0.3 mole of lithium then I know that my relative atomic mass of lithium is 7 so that means that one mole would give me 7 grams but I've got 0 0.3 so 0 0.3 mole is going to be 0 0.3 multiplied by 7 which is going to give me an answer of uh, 2.1 grams so I will have 2.1 grams of lithium let's go for part C 12 moles of NH3 so I've got 12 moles of NH3 what's that going to be well this time I want my molecular mass so that's going to be N which if I remember correctly is 14 plus 3 because I've got 3 hydrogen which is 17 so I've got to do 12 mole is going to give me 12 times 17 because one mole would give me 17. So 12 times 17 is going to give me an answer of 204 grams. And part D, we've got 1.35 mole of C2H6. So my relative molecular mass is going to be 2 times 12 plus 6 which is going to give me 2430. Uh, so 1.35 mole is going to be 1.35 multiplied by 30, which is going to give me an answer of 40.5 grams. Oh, run out of space. Let's go back to the top. So we'll do the last one now. Part E. So party, I've got 0 0.04 moles of NH4, 2, SO4. The relative molecular mass of that is going to be uh, 2 lots of 14 plus 4 
plus 32 plus 64. And remembering that four lots of oxygen is 64, uh, which if I remember correctly, in fact, I'm going to check it because I was on sets 98, but I can't remember that off the top of my head. 14 plus 4 uh, plus 32 plus 64 is 132. Oh, I was wrong. So it's 132. So one mole will be 132 grams. So 0.04 mole is going to be 0.04 multiplied by 132, which is going to give me an answer of 5.28 grams. Okay, go through, check you've got all of those correct. If you haven't, make sure you uh, you fix them uh, and uh, fix them with green pen. And we'll go on to the next little topic, which is counting the number of atoms. And we're going to need to be able to use our EXP button on our calculator to do so. So let me wipe the board whilst you're marking yours and going through and checking you've got it all correct. And as always, any questions, make sure you email us at school and we can go through it with you. So, number of atoms this time. We know Avogadro said, good old Avogadro, he said that one mole of a substance, whether that's atoms, whether that's a molecule, is always going to give you 6.022, or 6.02, sorry, let's not go to too many decimal places, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms or molecules. So if I have one mole of hydrogen atoms, then I am going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. If I have one mole of H2, then I'm going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Why is it a molecule this time? Because those hydrogens are bonded together. Okay, so no longer a single hydrogen, we've got hydrogens bonded together, which makes it a molecule. But if I wanted to know how many hydrogens I would have, then in fact I would have 12.04 times 10 to the 23 atoms of hydrogen. Okay, because each one comes with a pair, so there would be two lots of what I have in my molecule. So let's, uh, let's do an example. Let's give you something to have a go at first of all. So here's your example. Uh, how many molecules are there in 0.04 moles of H2SO4? How many molecules are there in 0.04 mole of H2SO4? sulfuric acid very similar to the question we've been doing previously we know that one mole of h2so4 would in fact give us 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms or ooh, no not atoms sorry let's make sure you use the right terms here molecules but we have less than that, so we must have less molecules. Well, in fact, if I multiply that by 0 0.04, I'm going to get 0 0.04 moles of H2SO4, which is going to give me 0 0.04 multiplied by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules, which if we do that on the calculator, and in fact, let's show you the calculator here so you can see it, we've got 0 0.04 multiplied by 6.02 times 10, oh, can't see it, that one there, times 10, and then 23, and your answer will still be in standard form, it's already done it for you, 6.408 oh, 6 times 10 to the 22, so 6, I can't read my own calculator, my apologies, 2.408 times 10 to the 22, so 2.408 times 10 to the 22 molecules. So we've been able to convert now from moles to number of atoms, from moles to grams and from grams to moles. So we're now going to go over. You're going to have a go at some more questions. So let's go to the PowerPoint. This time I'd like you to calculate the number of atoms or molecules in two moles of nitrogen. So that'd be atoms. 
0.3 moles of lithium, that'd be atoms, 12 moles of NH3, that'll be molecules, I don't want to know individual atoms, just molecules, 1.3 moles of C2H6, which again will be molecules, and 0.04 moles of NH42SO4, again, molecules. Pause the uh, YouTube video here, have a go at these questions, come back and we'll go through them together. Okay, welcome back ladies and gents. Hopefully you've managed to do all of those. So we'll go to the visualizer now and we'll have a look at some answers. So seven part A, we've got two moles of nitrogen. Well, we know that one mole is going to give us 6.022. Oh, no, too many decimal places. Don't want to do that. Let's keep it simple. 6.02 times 10 to the 23 so two moles is twice that so that's going to be two lots of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 which is going to be 12.04 times 10 to the 23 your calculator may even have done 1.204 times 10 to the 24 Okay, so that's the first one. Let's do the second one. We want 0.3 moles of lithium. So we know that one mole, again, will give us 6.02 times 10 to the 23 uh, atoms. 0.3 moles is less than that. So we're going to multiply that by 0.3, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 and if we do that calculation on our calculator and again look at the calculator so you can see it we're going to go 0 0.3 multiply that by 6.02 times 10 this button down here to the 23 and that will give us an answer of 1.806 times 10 to the 23 uh, atoms Okay, don't forget to put atoms at the end because you've got to say what it is you're measuring. So atoms. Okay, let's do number part C. This time we're not measuring atoms. We're going to measure 12 moles of NH3 molecules. So one mole is going to give us 6.02 times 10 to the 23 uh, molecules. Uh, so 12 moles is 12 times bigger which is going to be 12 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Doing that on the calculator again, let's have a look. 12 times 6.02 down here times 10 to the 23, which is going to give us an answer of 7.224 times 10 to the 24. Really, really big number there, massive number in fact. Part D. Let's do this one. We've got 1.35 moles of uh, C2H6. Well, we know, again, one mole is going to give us 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. So here we've got 1.35, just slightly bigger than just one mole. So we're not going to expect it to be massively different. Multiply through Avogadro's number by the number of moles. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23 do it on the calculator together again so 1.35 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 will give us an answer of 8.127 times 10 to the 23 uh, molecules oh missed that on my previous answer so that will be molecules as well making sure we know which ones are molecules which ones are atoms and let's do part e then so part e we've got 0 0.04 mole of nh42so4 so in this case we know that one mole let's do it anyway is going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules so 0 0.04 moles of it is going to be uh, 0 0.04 multiplied by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Let's move that up slightly so you can see the end. We'll do the calculator again. Uh, so 0 
times by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 will give us our answer, which is 2.408 times 10 to the 22 uh, molecules as well. So we've now been able to do the number of moles from the number of grams from the mass. We've been able to do the number of grams from the number of moles, and we've been able to do the number of atoms from the number of moles. Okay. We also could do the number of atoms from the number of grams, but we'd have to do two steps to get there. Okay. So there's lots of different things we can do with moles. Remember that a mole is just a number. That's the most important thing to take away from this. Okay. We're going to move on to uh, the next step which is going to be talking about limiting reactants. Now I know that these two calculations are really hard to follow along at home and certainly just using the textbook is not necessarily the best way of learning something like this. So let's go through what we did in that lesson or what you hopefully had to go at in that lesson and let's see if we can uh, really understand it. So limiting reactants. Now what do I mean when I say limiting reactants? Well what is going to be the uh, chemical we put into our reaction that's going to stop us from keeping getting more and more and more uh, of that reaction taking place? So let's start by looking at Mg plus O2 leading to magnesium oxide. Well, let, let's just very quickly, we'll do our crossover method here, making sure we are remembering that Mg is 2 plus because it is in group 2 of the periodic table. Okay, looking back at the periodic table, remember Mg is here, group 2. And remember that oxygen is here, group 6, which means it's going to be 2 minus, which means I need 1 Mg for every 1 oxygen. So it's going to become MgO. So we've got MgO as our product. Nothing else is a product because everything is contained in that. It's not balanced, is it? So let's make sure it's balanced. I've got two oxygens on this side. The only way to have two oxygens on this side is put a big two in front of my two MgO. Can't change the chemical structure of it. I can only have two lots of MgO. Now I've got two Mgs on this side and only one on this side. So I'm going to put a big two in front of my Mgs on that side. So what does this really mean? What, what are we talking about? Let's change colour. So if I consider my MGs and I say I'm going to put two blocks of Mg this much into my reaction. But as I do it, I'm going to make sure schematically I've got this much of my O2. So I've got quite a lot of O2. So let's put those Mgs in there. So roughly one was there, roughly one was there. So all of those magnesium atoms would be reacted with the oxygen. But I'd still have all of this left of my oxygen that's not reacting. So my oxygen would not be my limiting reactant because I still have some left. It would be my ma magnesium that is my limiting reactant. Why? Because that's the one that when it's used up entirely doesn't have any left to react with the other reactant. Remember my reactants are this side of my, um, my chemical equation. So here the, the magnesium would be my limiting reactant because my oxygen still has stuff left that can react that we're not considering. Okay, so that's all well and good. We've explained what a limiting reactant is. How do we calculate it? Because there's always a calculation when it comes to quantitative chemistry. So let's do an example. This is going to be the easiest way uh, to uh, remember it. Now, if I remember correctly, I've got a set of example questions here on the PowerPoint, or one set anyway. So we've got 6.3 grams of calcium carbonate CaCO3 is added to a solution containing 6.3 grams of nitric acid HNO3. 
We've got our chemical equation, really important first of all, CaCO3, so calcium carbonate, plus HNO3, nitric acid, is going to give me calcium nitrate, CaNO3, plus water, plus carbon dioxide. So we, we know that those two are there because it's a reaction of a metal carbonate with an acid. So this is kind of linking us back to that previous lesson of acids and alkalis. So our first part of this question is, calculate the number of moles of calcium carbonate used. Well, that's relatively straightforward because we've just done that in those previous worked examples that we've done and the ones you've just had a go at. We know the mass of calcium carbonate and we know what the formula is. So we can work out the molecular mass and work out how many moles we've got. Second one, exactly the same. Calculate the number of moles of nitric acid used. So again, we know the relative, uh, so we know the formula of nitric acid. We can work out the molecular formula of nitric acid and we know the mass of it. So we can work out the number of moles. Explain which of the reactants is a limiting reactant. Well, we know it's the one that's going to have more moles than the other. It's not quite as simple as that. So we'll look at that in a second and calculate the maximum mass of calcium nitrate that can be produced in this reaction. OK, so this is what we're going to uh, work out. So let's go back to visualizer and let's have a go at these questions. So. OK, so uh, let's look at part A we have, know that we are working out the number of moles of CaCO3 and we know we have got 6.3 grams. So we've got everything we need from the question and we'll just write it on a piece of paper. So number of moles is going to be equal to the mass divided by the molecular mass which in this case is 6.3 divided by calcium is going to be 40 plus 12 for carbon plus 3 lots of 16 for oxygen, which is going to give us 6.3 divided by, uh, I don't think I can do that in my head, so let's do it together, 40 plus 12 uh, plus another 3 times 16, which is going to give us 100, so 6.3 divided by 100, which will give us 0 0.063 moles. So we know how many moles now we've got of calcium carbonate. So let's move on to the next one. So we now want to work out the number of moles of the next chemical, which is nitric acid, HNO3. And we know that we've got uh, 6.3 grams of nitric acid. So this time we're going to have moles, exactly the same, is mass divided by molecular mass or relative molecular mass. So it's going to be 6.3 divided by H is 1, N is going to be uh, 14, and oxygen is going to be 3 times 16 again. If we do that on a calculator, we can see that we've got 1 plus 14 plus 16 times 3, which is going to give us an answer of 63. So I've got 63 at the bottom. So 6.3 divided by 63 is going to give us 0 0.1 mole. So CaCO3 is 0 0.063 mole. And H NO3 is going to be 0 0.1 mole. I'm just going to write that up so we've got it in the corner because we'll need to go on to the next part of the question. So part C now is going to ask us to explain which is the re limiting reactant. So in our equation, we know that the equation is CaCO3 plus 2 HNO3. I don't really care about the rest of the reaction. We'll just leave it as that for the moment. So that means that one mole of CaCO3 is going to react with two moles of HNO3. So I need every, every, for every one mole of CaCO3, I need two moles of HNO3. So therefore, three little dots, 0 0.063 mole of CaCO3 
would need two times 0 0.063 mole of HNO3. And two times 0 0.063 is going to be 0 0.126 mole. But we only have 0 0.1 mole. So therefore we don't have, so there is not, not enough HNO3 to fully react with all the CaCO3, the calcium carbonate. So the H NO3, the nitric acid, is the limiting reactant. And the calcium carbonate, CaCO3, is in excess. And remember, we've talked about excess before when we were doing our... Um, determining uh, we were doing our soluble salts so in excess there's more of it than we need okay so that's part c so now let's go to part d which is a bit of a calculation now would like us to work out the maximum mass of calcium uh, nitrate that could be produced in this reaction so let's break this down so i know i've got 0 0.1 mole of HNO3, of nitric acid. And I know that that is going to produce half of the amount of CaCO3. So 0 0.1 mole will react with 0 0.05 mole of calcium carbonate. How do I know that? Because that was the two in my uh, calculation, in my um, chemical equation, CaCO3 plus 2HNO3. So I know that two lots of that will react with one lot of that. Well, I've got that much of it. So in order to react with one lot of that, I will only have half of it. So 0 0.05 moles. Okay, so that, and because that's my limiting reactant, that's what we need to work with because we still will have some CaCO3, some calcium carbonate left over. So mass of Ca NO3 2 formed will give me 0 0.05 because I'm going to get one mole of my um, calcium nitrate because remember there's no uh, there's no uh, number on my calcium nitrate. In fact, let me just go back to PowerPoint for a second so you can see, looking at the chemical equation, there's no number of moles. We haven't had to balance this part here. So one mole of this will react with two moles of this, which will give us one mole of this. Okay, so this is where we're, we're bringing this all together. So the mass of the CaNO3 formed is going to be 0 0.05. And we know that if I've got 0 0.05 moles, then that is going to give me a mass of 40 plus 2 times 14 plus 3 times 16. Well, complicated equation. But we know that's true because we've done this in our previous work. We've worked out the number of the mass we get for the number of moles, which if we do that calculation, will leave us with 8.2 grams. So remember that the... Um, Nitric acid is the one that's limiting because it has the least number of moles when you compare uh, like for like one to two ratio. And then you use the one that's a limiting case to work out the mass that's left. So it's going to be your turn to have a go. Let's go to PowerPoint. So a solution containing 6.62 grams of lead nitrate PbNO32 was added to a solution containing 6.62 grams of sodium iodide NaI. So here's our equation. PbNO32, there's only one lot of it, so one mole reacts with two moles of NaI, of sodium iodide, which gives us one mole of lead iodide plus two moles of sodium nitrate. 
So first question is to calculate number of moles of lead nitrate used. I think that's quite straightforward. Calculate the number of moles of potassium iodide used. Again, quite straightforward. Explain which of the reactants is the limiting reactant. So which one has got the least and take into account the fact you've got that two there for sodium iodide. And then the maximum mass of lead iodide that could be produced in the reaction. And to make life easier, I've even given you your relative atomic masses here. So we've got sodium is 14, oxygen 16, uh, sorry, nitrogen is 14, oxygen 16, sodium 23, iodine 127 and lead 207. So pause the YouTube video here, have a go at this. If you get it wrong, it's not a problem. This is really, really complicated and we will definitely be looking at it again in the future. But have a go now and let's see how far you can get. So pause the video here and we'll come back together and we'll go through each of these steps uh, to check that we can do them. Okay, well done, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a go at the question itself. Okay, so part A. These are the these are straightforward ones, hopefully. Pb NO3 2. And we know we've got 6.62 grams of it. So the number of moles as we've done many times today, is going to be the mass divided by the molecular mass. Well, that's going to be 6.62, divide that by uh, 207 plus my two lots of 14 plus 3 times 16. Not an easy calculation, but do it on your calculator. Do the bottom part first and then do your overall part. But you should have found you have 0 0.02 moles if you've got that correct give it a tick well done that's really good good start okay part b then wants to do the same this time for sodium iodide and i know again i've got 6.62 grams we put exactly the same in so moles again is going to be equal to the mass divided by the molecular mass which is going to be 6.62 divide that by 23 plus one, two, seven. Oh, I realise I've got brackets around that. Let's put brackets there. 23 plus one, two, seven, which if you do that should give you 0 0.0441 moles. Again, if you've got that one correct, really, really well done. These are not easy calculations. Let's do C before I need to wipe the board. So C, now we need to say which one is our limiting reactant. So we've got 0 0.02 mole of PbNO3 2 of lead nitrate needs 2 times 0 0.02 mole, which is 0 0.04 mole of sodium iodide. Okay, so which one? So to, to fully react. So which one then doesn't have enough? So this time it's not going to be the sodium iodide. It's only the second reactant that's going to have less number of moles. In this case, it's actually the lead because I can do more with my sodium iodide than I have said I can because my lead is my limiting case. So my lead PB, my lead nitrate, NO3, 2 is the limiting reactant. Okay, so we're going to use that now as the final part of this uh, question to work out the maximum mass that we're going to be able to uh, calculate. So part D here. So uh, maximum mass, we know we've got, let me write this down again, 0 0.02 mole of lead. PBNO32, and we know we had, um, oh, lost it, let's write the previous one. We know we had 0 .0, 0 0.0441 mole of sodium iodide. Okay, so let's work this out. So 0 0.02 was the one, uh, so 0 0.2 of, of mole of lead uh, um, nitrate was going to be our limiting reactant. So that is going to produce 
0 0.02 mole of lead iodide. How do we know that? Let's go back to uh, the PowerPoint for a second. We know that because there's one lot of lead nitrate to one lot of lead iodide. So one mole of this will give me one mole of this. If I was doing it the other way around, it'd be two moles of this would give me one mole of this. Okay. So back to visualizer. So 0 0.02 moles of lead nitrate will produce 0 0.02 moles of lead iodide. So the mass of lead iodide is going to be 0 0.02 lots, because that's how many moles we've got, of its relative uh, molecular mass, which will be 2 times 1, 2, 7, because we've got uh, lead and 2 iodines, which is going to give me an answer, if we do it on a calculator, of 9.22 grams. Really, really well done if you manage to do that. It's a very, very hard set of questions to do. Um, but well done, give it a good mark if you've got it right. And if not, correct it and try and make sure you understand what you haven't got right here. Okay, on to the last part of this lesson. And then I shall be giving you some uh, questions to go and have a go at. Uh, so it's no longer about limiting reactants. Now we're going to talk about something called stoichiometry. What a great name. Stoichiometry. Okay, so stoichiometry, just a fancy chemi chemistry word for knowing the balanced equation or, or what we would call deducing the balanced equation. So that is what stoichiometry is. It's this process of deducing the balanced equation. So let, let's do an example because this is, this is the only way to kind of showcase what it is. So here's my example. Uh, just check if it's on the PowerPoint, which it is. It is. So we'll just bring it to the forefront. So I've got 10.8 grams of aluminium is reacting with 42.6 grams of chlorine to produce aluminium chloride, ALCL, should be a subscript 3 there, uh, ALCL3. Use this data to deduce the balanced equation for this reaction. So we know with stoichiometry when we have to deduce a balanced equation. That tells you this is the stoichiometry process we're going to do. So it's a five-step process, just like we've been doing with all our other calculations or lots of our other calculations in this topic. Five steps to follow to do it. So first step is write down the two chemicals, the two reactants that are going to react together to produce your product. In this case, I've got Al and I've got Cl2 because that was what was in the question. Second step is to work out the number of moles. So I know that my aluminium, I've got 10.8 grams and my relative atomic mass of aluminium is going to be 27. So I have 0.4 moles of aluminium. And for my chlorine, I've got 42.6 grams. And I know my relative atomic mass is going to be 35.5. But... It's Cl2, so I've got 35.5 multiplied by 2. Shouldn't have been so quick, I put my equals in there. So it's going to be 2 lots of 35.5, put brackets around that, which is going to give me an answer of 0 0.6 moles of um, Cl2. Third step, just like one of those previous calculations we've done, we've got to work out the ratio, the simplest ratio. Take the smallest and divide it through by both of them. In this case, 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.4, which is going to give me 1. And 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.4, which is going to give me 1.5. Now, we know that you don't get a 1.5 in your balanced equation, so we have to find the simplest whole numbers that we can have. If we've got 0 0.5 or we've got 0 0.5 in there, we know we can multiply by 3 by, three by 2. <coughs> so I'm going to have 1 times 2 means I'm going to have 2 moles of aluminium for my 1.5 times 2 for my 3 moles of Cl2. So we know 2 mole of aluminium will react with... 3 moles of Cl2 
So then we're going to balance it. Step five is just to balance it like usual. So we put our equation down and we go two lots of aluminium, because that's what we found out from here, plus three lots of chlorine two, because we found that out from here, is going to give us AlCl3. Now we haven't found the balance for this side, but we can work it out quite quickly, because if we do what we do, for our balanced equations, AL and CL. How many on this side? Well, I've got two lots of AL there. How many CL? I've got six lots of CL there, but I've only got one lot of AL and three lots of CL3. So put a big two in front. And now I've got two lots of AL and six lots of CL3. Okay, so that is uh, one of the examples I've got. I think I've got a second one. Yeah, let's do a second one just to make sure we've understood this because this is sort of new. So this time we're going to deduce again the balanced equation and it's going to be deduced the balanced equation when 1.3 grams of zinc powder was added to silver nitrate solution AgNO3. 4.32 grams of silver was produced and a solution of zinc nitrate ZnNO3 brackets 2. Okay, use these data to deduce the balanced equation for the reaction. Okay, so stoichiometry again. We know it's stoichiometry because it's a balanced equation. That's what we're trying to deduce. So we know that that's what's taking place. So step one, write down what, we, what we've got in our calculation. So I've got Zn and I've got Ag. Step two, work out the number of moles. So for zinc, I've got 1.3 grams. And I know my relative atomic mass for zinc, finding it on the periodic table, uh, is going to be... I've lost it. <laughs> 65. So 1.3 divided by 65 is going to give me 0 0.02. So I've got 0 0.02 moles of zinc. And my silver... I've got 4.32 grams of silver. My relative atomic mass of silver is 108, which is going to give me a 0 0.04 moles of silver. Okay, so same, same step. Step three, we're going to divide three by the smaller number. So 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.02 will give me one. And 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.02 will give me two. So I know that one mole of zinc will react with two mole of silver. So therefore, we can write our equation. We've got Zn plus two lots of silver will give us, and we were told what our Silver nitrate, sorry. So we know that one mole of Zn plus some molar amount of AgNO3 2 will give me two moles of silver plus some unknown amount of ZnNO3 brackets 2. So now we need to balance it. We've got Zn, we've got Ag, we've got N, and we've got an O. So let's start with the Zn. It's got one on this side. At the moment, I've got one on this side. Silver, one on this side, two on this side. Nitrogen, I've got two on this side. I've got two on this side. And oxygens, I've got six on this side. And then I have got six on this side. So the only thing that's not balanced is my number of um, silver. So I'm going to put two in front of the AgNO32. Ugh, that's why it's not working. It's not AgNO32, it's AgNO3. My apologies. In fact, let's let's just redo that all together, and we'll redo those. 
So we know it's AgNO3 gives 2Ag plus ZnNO3 2. So let's have a look. I've got one lot of Zn. I've got one lot of Zn. I've got one lot of Ag. I've got one lot of N. And I've got three lots of O. On this side, I've got two lots of Ag. I've got two lots of N. And I've got six lots of O. So if I put a big two in front of my AgNO3, then I'm going to have two lots of Ag, which I'm happy with. I'm going to have two lots of N, which I'm happy with. And I'm going to have six lots of O, which I'm happy with. So we've now balanced it. So one mole of zinc will react with two moles of silver nitrate to give two moles of silver plus one mole of zinc nitrate. <coughs> so your turn to have a go now. So I'll put the question up. I'd like you to work out the balanced equation. So stoichiometry again, 2.76 grams of sodium is going to react with 5.7 grams of titanium chloride, TiCl4, to form titanium and sodium chloride, NaCl. Use this data to deduce the balanced equation for the reaction. So pause the PowerPoint here, have a go at this calculation. It is hard. I really, really agree this is not an easy thing to do. Um, like I say, we will have another go at this when we're back in school, but have a go now. See what you can get. If you get it wrong, don't worry, um, but let's see whether you can get a balanced equation at the end. Okay, so once you've had a go at that and you paused the YouTube to have a go at it. Let's try and do this together. So come back to the visualizer and let's first of all do the easy part. So I know that sodium is reacting with titanium chloride. Uh, so let's, let's do step one which is to write down what I know. I know sodium and I know titanium chloride, TiCl4. So my number two, my number of moles is going to be 2.76. Divide that by 23 because it's a relative atomic mass of 23, which gives me 0 0.12 moles. And 5.70 uh, grams of titanium chloride. Divide that by 48, which is my titanium, plus four lots of 35.5, which will give me 0 0.03 mole of titanium chloride. We're going to do step three now, divide by the smallest number. Well, the smallest number is in fact the 0 0.03. So I'm going to go for 0 0.12, divide that by 0 0.03 will give me four. And obviously 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.03 will give me one. Chances are you get to this stage, you get probably three out of four or two out of four of the marks if it was a four mark question. So this shows four mole of sodium reacts with one mole of titanium chloride, titanium tetrachloride in fact, because there's four of them. So balanced equation we're going to have four lots of Na plus TiCl4 is going to give us titanium and sodium chloride, NaCl, which we don't know yet what number we're going to have there. So we must balance it now. So I've got Na, Ti and Cl. So I've got four lots of Na. I've got one lot of TI, I've got four lots of CL. I've got uh, one lot of TI, I've got one lot of NA, and I've got one lot of CL. Well, that needs to be four times bigger, so I'm gonna put a big four in front of my sodium chloride. So that means that this being balanced will be four moles of sodium, plus one mole of titanium chloride will give me one mole of titanium, plus four moles of sodium chloride. Okay, well done, ladies and gentlemen. That is a really, really hard lesson. Um, obviously, you can watch this video again if you want to go through it and, and check you've understood it. Um, what I uh, will do is I will upload uh, some mastery questions, which got loads of questions in it. Have a go at them, see how well you do. We will go through the answers at the start of next lesson because this is quite hard to mark remotely uh, and we'll have a go through. 
As always, any questions, email us and let us know uh, and we can obviously get back to you through that. So have a go at those mastery questions. Good luck with that, ladies and gents. And then let me know if there's anything you don't understand.